Okay, I think we can get started. So again, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Chantel Smith, and I'm the coordinator of recruitment and programming here for the Honors College at the University of Maryland. Also joining me for this chat are Jenny Lang, the Associate Director of Admissions and Recruiting, and a number of our current Honors College students who will be available to answer your questions. Um, this presentation will be about 10 to 15 minutes, but we will be available um, throughout the whole time um, up until about 1 p.m. to answer any questions that you have. Um, this is a webinar, so um, just to give you a little uh, information on the features, there is a Q&A area. Okay, there's a Q&A area um, where you can ask your questions. Um, there's also an option for you to upvote a question. So if another attendee is asking a question that um, you also are seconding, like you want to answer, ask the same question, you have a, um, an option to kind of like it and it'll kind of push it up on our radar to answer it. Um, if you have any technical uh, issues, like you can't hear us or something of that nature, we would ask that you use the chat feature um, to tell us that information. That'd be awesome. And other than that, let's go ahead and get started with introductions. Um, I'm going to start with Ida. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ida. I'm a sophomore architecture student here at UMD, and I'm part of the Honors Humanities program here, or HOHUM, as we abbreviate it. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to be here and uh, talk about honors. Thanks, Ida. Jackson. Hi, y'all. My name's Jackson. I'm a senior biology major. Um, neurobiology and physiology and statistics minor. Um, <clears throat> I was in the DCC program, Design, Cultures, and Creativity, <clears throat> and my pronouns are he, him, and they, them. Ooh. Thanks, Jackson. Eric? Hey, guys. My name is Eric. I'm a junior here at UMD studying bioengineering. I'm in the Gemstone Honors Program, where I'm like pretty involved, so if you guys have questions about what Gemstone offers, I can answer that. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Eric. Tyla. Hey guys, my name is Tyla. I am a senior chemical engineering major. Um, I also was in the DCC, our design, culture, and creativity, uh, living and learning program. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I think that's everything, yeah. Thanks, Tyla. And last but not least, Radhika. Hi everyone, I'm Radhika. I am a senior physiology and neurobiology major. I am part of the Integrated Life Sciences or ILS program, and I am really excited to be here today. Thanks guys. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and give you guys a brief um, general uh, introduction to the Honors College. Um, if your students have already seen this probably, so you may have already gotten a glimpse of this, um, but yeah, continue to ask your, any questions that you have um, at this time while we're going through the presentation. All right. So this is actually our building. If you can see our screen, this is the, um, the main um, building where our offices are and actually home to um, our Honors Humanities Living Learning Program in the under the home. So what is the Honors College? The Honors College is home to six different of our living learning programs. The living learning program is a um, specialized partnership or a program that is specialized partnership between resident life staff and other student services staff across the university where the curricular and residential experiences are linked in ways that um, create opportunities for our students for deeper understanding and integration of their classroom material. So our mission is to give students the opportunity to explore the frontiers of knowledge and discovery to encounter new ideas and experiences, to learn through inclusivity and deep respect for others, and to pursue the power of knowledge to make a difference in the world, all while we're fostering learning inside and outside of the classroom and creating a supportive close-knit community for our students. So during um, preferencing, which is underway now for our incoming students, um, those students have the opportunity to identify which of the living room programs they prefer and so I'll kind of go over each one of them very briefly. So Gemstone is a unique multidisciplinary four-year research program for all students of all majors that are interested in leadership, teamwork, and social impact. These students typically will work in teams of eight to 12 beginning at the end of their freshman year 
and continued throughout their senior year on a research project with the guidance of a dedicated faculty mentor. When we have university honors, which has a focused but still multidisciplinary curriculum. It's comprised of promising students, dedicated staff, and expert faculty drawn from all backgrounds and disciplines that are united by a shared commitment to leading a life propelled by curiosity. This program um, is actually our largest living learning program within honors. Next, we have design cultures and creativity, which explores the roles and impact of design in our societies and creative practices. They are theorists and thinkers who investigate the digital age through designing, analyzing, and creating. And then we have Honors Humanities, where they explore great ideas, great books, and great art, empowering students to find their voices and imagining their future in the changing world. And Integrated Life Sciences actually offers um, a residential living learning community like the rest of our programs do with innovative honors life science courses, facilitated research internship opportunities and service learning experiences that are designed to launch the careers of outstanding students exploring all aspects of life sciences. And last but not least, we have our um, advanced cybersecurity experience for students where they develop successful forward thinker cyber leaders who create a safer world by embracing both the technical and non-technical aspects of cyber. So what is the benefit of being in part of the Honors College? What is the Honors experience? So within the Honors College, our students take small multidisciplinary discussion-based courses, many of which are smaller, significantly smaller than the regular courses offered at, um, all UND, for all UND students. Our students also earn an honor citation, which is listed on their transcript, um, typically within two years following the um, completion of their curriculum for their living learning program. Although, um, as stated before, we do have one program, Gemstone, our research based, which is um, four years long. Students are also able to connect more closely with fellow honor students within that tight knit community and with programs, their programs dedicated faculty and staff which is great when they're living um, or going to a school as large as um, UMD. We also offer study abroad, internship and research opportunities both on and off campus. And our students, although we do um, create this small knit community for them, they are at no point siloed for the rest of campus. So our students participate fully in the life of the university. In most cases, um, our, our students are members of a multitude of student groups across campus. We also offer a number of social events and leadership opportunities um, to allow our students to connect both with the entire Honors College community and through their specific living learning programs. So more than 80% of our honor students complete an internship. And given our location in the Washington DC um, region, it gives our students more access to internship opportunities. The living learning programs bring in um, experts in the fields to meet with their students. Um, for example, we have um, ACES, which is our cyber program. Um, they actually have a career mentor program where experts from organizations such as Northern Grumman and the NSA come in and talk with um, our students um, about their career and how they got there and to offer um, students guidance in their careers. And we also also, oh, excuse me, and also our internships are available um, during the school year over the summer and can be either on campus or off. And at the bottom, you'll just see a, just a small sample of some of the places that our students have interned. So more than 50% of our students um, completed research experience. So the University of Maryland is a research one institution, which is a designation that indicates that our campus engages in the highest levels of research activity. This means there's more grants here, more labs, more faculty, and more opportunities for our undergraduate students to get involved. And since within the Honors um, College, we offer smaller class sizes in a close-knit community amongst the um, faculty and staff, um, this gives our students closer access to those faculty, um, the faculty, and therefore more op um, opportunities to work within those faculty labs. Um, research opportunities are available both on and off campus. And again, because of our prime location, students have easy access to research opportunities in the area to include um, John Hopkins and National Institutes of Health. Although you'll also see another small sample of places that our students have researched. So 
So many of our students, about 30, more than 30% of them, um, complete a study abroad experience. So while our students are um, pretty busy with their uh, coursework um, and usually are in majors that have heavy course loads, um, this makes studying abroad for an entire semester pretty challenging. But we do offer winter and spring break um, and summer study abroad options. So if students are interested in studying abroad for a semester, um, we would definitely recommend they talk to their advisor um, as soon as possible to start planning that. And we do have a study abroad office on campus to go and um, inquire more about that. And for those who are really interested in this um, opportunity, um, our Honors Humanities Living Learning Program is currently working um, on um, a study abroad option within their curriculum. So again, if that's important to you, Honors Humanity might be a good choice to look at. Again, another uh, sample of places that our students have studied abroad. It's pretty amazing. So as mentioned before, um, we offer our students quite a bit of leadership opportunities and opportunities to um, connect with other students across the Honors College. So just to highlight a couple of our different programs, um, our Honors Ambassadors um, is a volunteer organization consisting of our current students who are available to talk to prospective students. These students participate in all of our on-campus recruiting events. For example, the students that you see before you today um, are, that are answering your questions are all honors ambassadors. Um, we also offer an opportunity for our student, for our incoming students or prospective students um, to meet with one of our honors ambassadors in a one-to-one -one setting. Um, it's called a virtual hangout. Um, and that's, um, if your student is interested in that, we actually have that information on our website and our visit us page. Um, and there's just a form for them to fill out. Um, we also have st a student programming council, oh, excuse me, council that organizes social events for the entire Honors College. Again, bringing our students together from all different learning programs to connect. Another one to highlight is the Black Honors Caucus, which aims to serve the university as a whole by providing a forum for diversity and discussion about the community's greatest concerns. And although this organization is sponsored um, by the Honors College, membership is open to all students across the campus. So once our students are here, we do have a scholarship office on campus to help connect them with scholarships that fit their goals and skills. And many of our honor students have been very successful in applying for and winning these competitive national and international awards. And you can see on this slide, just a few of the national awards and scholarships that our students in the Honors College have earned this past year. So after graduation, um, our after graduation, excuse me, 68% of our Honors College students um, have a job lined up, which is pretty fantastic. And about 25% of them plan to attend graduate school following their undergrad uh, career. Some students even went on to volunteer opportunities like the Mayor Corps and the Peace Corps. And then we also had a small percentage of our students um, join the military after graduation. And some examples um, just uh, uh, of types of graduate programs that our students attend, that includes med school, law school, veterinary medicine, library science, engineering, and anthropology. And a couple of career placement examples would include Amazon, Booz Allen Hamilton, um, Voice of America, and PricewaterhouseCoopers. So that brings me to the end of our general um, kind of presentation on the Honors College. Um, please, this is the time for us to kind of answer your questions. Um, if you have them and um, let your students know, don't forget that they need to submit their living learning program preferences by February 22nd for best consideration. Um, again, them submitting this form does not commit them to UMD at all. It just merely reserves their spot within our um, community um, if they so choose to come to commit later on. And if you wanna learn more about the Honors College and the different living learning programs that we offer, you can visit us at honors.umd.edu. Um, from that page, um, you can, uh, we have all of our living learning programs listed there. So you can kind of go there. And um, we actually had online chats last week with each living learning program. So you and your students can view um, those on our website to kind of learn more about each living learning program. If you have follow-up questions after this uh, online chat, then you can contact us at honorsadmissions.umd.edu. 
And feel free to follow us on our um, social media accounts. Um, our Facebook page is UMD Honors College and an Instagram is Terp, at Terp Honors. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a second so that I can see some questions and we can kind of get chatting. Okay, awesome. So first question for Jackson, um, would you advise choosing an honors program? Whoops, where did it go? I think I got it also. Um, it's oh. Basically, would you suggest choosing an honors program that aligns with your major and how it, does that affect internships? Um, so personally, I did not choose an LLP that directly aligns with my major. I'm a biology major, so the alignment would probably be integrated life sciences which reduced I can speak more to, but um, uh, DCC, Design Cultures and Creativity was um, kind of more social justice oriented, design problem solving, critical thinking, that type of stuff. And um, I would say it was super beneficial for me to have an interdisciplinary learning environment. And it actually might've um, helped me get more internships because it allowed me to think in a different direction as well as, well as explore different paths that I wasn't originally thinking. So. Yes, you can 100% um, go to uh, living and learning programs that do align well with your major, but I wouldn't say it's any more beneficial in any type of way. Thank you, Jackson. Okay, so next question. Um, and this is for Rebecca. Um, so basically they're confirming, so joining the honest college, you have to pick one of the areas, um, pick one of our living learning programs. Um, you don't pick one, you'll preference it on the form. It'll just kind of tell you which ones you prefer at the top. Um, so if picking ILS, how does that work? Well, I mentioned it's a two-year program starting the sophomore year. So what do you do as a freshman and senior? Go ahead, Ritika. Yeah, so I'll answer this question kind of broadly actually because it applies for more than just ILS. So Gemstone is the four-year program and Eric can definitely touch upon that again because he is in Gemstone. But the other programs are kind of designed to be completed within two years. So most people will receive their honors college citation the fall of their junior year because they will have completed all the honors courses for the respective living and learning program, their, four, their first four semesters in college. So that being said, after you graduate from your LLP, you are still very much welcome to attend the living learning programming. There's often social programming, there might be mentorship programs, um, and you're very, very much welcome to go to the advisors. The advisors is definitely one of the big thing that I think draws a lot of people to the honors college because you meet these people your freshman year and they'll kind of continue to monitor your progress and help and grow whatever your professional aspirations are up until your graduation. Um, so ILS definitely falls into that and so as a junior and senior you'll have technically finished the ILS course sequence but you can still always go back for advising or whatnot and that's something that applies to the other two-year programs as well. So DCC, ACES, HOHUM, um, all of those. Perfect. Thanks, Vidika. Um, also, I know you're also a TA, so maybe you can answer this question. Um, are any of the honors college classes taught by TAs? Yeah, so not really. They're all taught by professors. Some of them might have discussion sections that are maybe facilitated by a TA, um, but the courses are strictly usually taught by professors. Thank you. Um, so the next question is, I've heard various things as to the safety of the surrounding town of College Park. Can you comment on that, um, Ida? Yeah, so um, I definitely understand your concern about the safety of College Park. Um, it's uh, understandable that you'd be concerned, but um, I have never been felt unsafe here at UMD. Um, the campus is very safe. You have lots of those um, emergency blue light buttons, which I've never had to use or known anybody that has to use them, but they are there. And we have uh, campus police as well as um, the uh, Prince George's County Police Department. Uh, and um, while I would say be smart and don't walk around in the middle of the night alone, <laughs> um, you should be okay. Just if you're using common sense and safety, you should be safe. I've always felt very safe here. And um, there's lots of support. There's also night ride, um, which you can call at any time if you feel unsafe and they will uh, drive you home. No questions asked, I think. So like if you uh, just are feeling unsafe or if you feel um, 
that you cannot make it home safely because you are somehow either inebriated or something. They will not hassle you or anything. They're just there to help you feel safe and get home safe. Thanks, Ida. So next question is, and anyone can jump in on this one, is it, um, do you think that it is difficult for international students to get an internship from a serious perspective? Would anyone um, want to comment or know anything about that? Wait, can you repeat that, Chantal? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, um, is it difficult for international students to get an internship if any of you guys know that information? I would say no. I mean, from a staff perspective, I would say no, it isn't. Um, if you're going to school, um, you would still have the kind of same connections and networking as if you're in the Amish College with the same people. Um, let's see. Okay, Tyler, this one's you. So um, how does it work to be an engineering in the Honors College? Um, are there any honors college, excuse me, honors classes available in engineering? Is it difficult to get into these classes? Well, there's multiple questions. And then what are the advantages and disadvantages living in the honors college versus um, well, the living learning communities, the uh, oh, other living learning communities like Virtues and Lexus? Yeah, so um, being engineering in the Honors College, I think a lot of people are scared that it's going to be too much work. But as we've kind of mentioned a couple times already, your um, Honors courses typically fulfill your gen ed requirements. So it's a great way to get those out of the way. Um, in regards to Honors classes available in engineering, yes, there are plenty of Honors courses available in engineering. Um, they have honors versions of the math and physics classes that are prereqs for almost all engineering majors, as well as there are um, engineering classes themselves that have honors versions. Um, uh, oh, next question. <laughs> um, uh, Flexus and Virtus are also great living and learning programs, um, but I found that um, I personally really benefited from the interdisciplinary aspect of being in an honors living and learning program. So having um, majors other than just engineering around me, it was really cool um, and a great opportunity to get different perspectives on learning and things like that. So um, also chances are you'll probably have some other engineers in your program. Um, there are a ton of engineering majors at UMD and within the um, honors college itself. So I thought that being in honors was really, really beneficial. And I don't feel like I missed out by not doing um, Flexus. Thanks, Tyler. So one um, reminder, um, if you have questions, um, if you could put them in the Q&A section, I think some are coming through chat, but we're, the chat area should only be for technical issues. Um, so our panelists can see all of the questions. Please put them in the Q&A area. Um, so the next question is, um, which living learning programs require living together for freshman and sophomore year? So, okay, so going back to that, um, our integrated life sciences program requires of uh, their students to live um, at La Plata Hall for their first year. And then we have um, ACES, which is the cyber program. They require their students to live um, in Prince Frederick Hall for their first two years. So those are the only two programs that we have that have a, a actual requirement the rest of our living learning programs all have their, all, their own assigned resident hall where they highly suggest and highly encourage their students to opt for that. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a requirement. So if a student wanted to live someone else, they could request that. Um, if the student does not request any special accommodations, then they would be, I believe, uh, space contingent would be placed in whichever uh, resident hall is, is assigned to the living learning program. All right, so can you discuss how you manage the extra workload? Um, how many hour, extra hours dedicated to the honors program or, or how many more hours, I guess, would you say you get to dedicate to your curriculum? Um, Jackson? Um, this can be open to everyone because I think that is applicable to everyone. Yeah. But from my uh, uh, perspective as a student in DCC and as a biology major, it really wasn't any additional work. Um, I would have had to take a, a general education credit otherwise if I wasn't really taking my living and learning program credit, which also qualified for general education. Um, and I also found those uh, classes to be really rewarding and, a, and often a break from my major coursework. 
um, and it allowed me to like get to know people better, learn new things. So I don't think it was really any added workload um, that was too stressful. Thank you. Anyone else want to add? Maybe Eric, you haven't even added. I know you got a four-year program. Yeah, kind of going off what Jackson said, I wouldn't say it's um, taxing. I know someone else used that word. It's more rewarding. They design these programs to help with your career goals. It's not like you're doing extra homework or studying for Gemstone. Um, I'd say it's more like professional development and really getting mentorship. So it doesn't feel like extra work. If anything, it's more uh, just more support is kind of how I see it. Thanks, Eric. So um, this question, I'll try to rephrase it. It's asking for one of the panelists um, to suggest or recommend a particular honors uh, living learning program for a business student. So um, one, I just want to say that like, depending, there is no um, one size fits all, like a specific program goes to the specific major. Um, but from the student perspective, I, you know, if one of you or two of you guys could kind of um, add on to that as far as like, what advice would you give an incoming student when they're, I guess, looking at selecting the learning programs? My advice would be um, to focus more on where you think you fit in than what you think fits with your major. Um, because the purpose of the Honors College is to you know, um, expand upon what you're doing already in college. And so if you think that, you know, you're a biology major and you think that you're going to be the happiest in ILS doing biology related things and honors, then do that. But if you're a biology major and you think you're going to be the happiest in ACES where you can learn cool stuff about cybersecurity, do that. Um, it's really about finding the place where you fit best and where you can build a community and really take advantage of um, the resources that are within that program. Thank you. Um, let's see. This might go back to some detail. So for engineering students, is there a class you can take as a freshman that would help you decide which, which engineering major? So I guess which specializes? Oh, yeah, I, I was actually, oh, sorry. Okay. I was no, actually just typing out a response, so I'll just oh. say what I was typing. Um, but I was just saying that uh, your freshman year, you take ENES 100, uh, which is a class where you get on a team and you build something. Uh, we got to build an oversand vehicle. And in that class, you get the chance to try out lots of things. Um, you can try uh, building, programming. They have things related to like chemistry in there if you're thinking about some sort of bio or chem engineering track. Um, so it's like a really cool opportunity to try out a bunch of new things. Sorry, Eric, go ahead. No, you answered that. You said everything I was going to say. <laughs> I think, yeah, the first year of engineering is designed to like help you figure those things out. Like Tyler was saying, ENS 100 is a great example of that. Um, you definitely don't have to know your specialty until later. So I wouldn't stress too much about that. Thank you guys. Um, I do see a question that says, do any honor students co-op? Could you, uh... oh, go ahead. Yes, I think it's possible, um, especially if you're in a two-year program because once you're done with the first two years, um, you don't have any more required honors courses to take. So you can do it in your junior or senior year. Um, but also, I think that's something that um, you can bring up with within your specific LLP. And I think the answer will vary as to, to what you can do while you're in the actual program. But yes, honor students can do co-ops. Thank you. So question, what is the living situation for the university honors program? Um, so right now, their building is Hager's Town Hall. They're not required to live there, but that's usually, um, they all the students love like being there because they get to uh, really connect with each other. It is one of the largest of our living learning programs. So it's a good um, way to connect. Um, they are, they do have a new resident hall that's under construction on the website. I believe it says that it's set to be open the end of this year. Um, that's to be determined. Um, is that the goal? I think that's the goal, right, Jenny? Oh, you're fine. For um, uh, the new resident hall for UH to be open by the end of this year. That's what it says on yes. the website, but 
Yes. There's still negotiations, I believe. So we don't know exactly when it'll be open and available for UH students. So most likely not the class that uh, is, you know, looking at us for fall 2021, probably by fall 2022. That's what I'm thinking too, yeah. Oh, okay, so when is X Friday? Okay, so Ida, what has been your favorite honors humanities class so far? Um, so my favorite ho-hum class, honors humanities, has been um, this dance ethnography class that I took last semester, which was very interesting to take over Zoom. Um, but I actually think it made it better over Zoom because we were able to take a lot of different um, like classes from dancers, professional dancers all around the world who could Zoom in. We had one person from India. We had one person from um, like Zooming in from like Hawaii, from Mexico. It was really interesting. And it uh, was not only uh, a great way to learn about something in the humanities, but it was also a research-based course. So uh, we got to practice like proper research techniques. Um, it was very fun. That sounds really interesting. Thanks, Ida, for that. <laughs> um, for ILS, can you tell me more about the wellness component? I'm actually just typing the answer out to oh. that. <laughs> um, so for ILS specifically, we have like a lot of social programming in the sense of like peer mentor events, um, game nights recently with uh, during the winter time, one of our, the associate director, she always puts together a wellness bingo. And it's just like having people do different self-care activities. And then once you hit the bingo, you get entered in a raffle and we have a lot of amazing prizes. Um, so that's like the fun stuff. But then also we do have guest speaker events with people coming in from like the counseling center. Um, and then the advisors are always there during the freshman and sophomore year specifically, they'll go out of their way each semester to meet up with a student one on one just to, you know, check in how they're doing. Um, and just really make sure that you're not only like doing well in your classes on like a professional and academic sense, but also just in a personal sense and how they can best support you. Um, so it's definitely something that is prioritized by the program. Thank you, Rudy. Appreciate that. Okay, so another question. Um, how would you describe some of the benefits of DCC? So we have two DCCers in here, so you guys can both kind of chime in on that. <laughs> Um, I'll go first. Um, I think one, um, and really almost most importantly, is the community. Um, that's just such an amazing part. Um, this is a large campus, um, and being in a living and learning program of any kind, but particularly with DCC, kind of shrinks it for you and, and gives you a built-in community as soon as you enter. Um, I've made some of the best friends of my life here. Tyler's actually my roommate. We're zooming in from different rooms right now. Um, so I think that is one. I think two, it offers a different way of learning and a different type of learning than what I'm used to in my um, pretty hard STEM curriculum of statistics and biology. And it allows a relief from that, but also a different way of learning. Um, and we also get to do a capstone project at the end of our sophomore year, which at its most superficial level is a great thing to talk about in interviews and put on your resume. But on a more deeply and kind of abstract level, it allows you to be creative, think in a different way, and also kind of approach a different type of social problem. But I'll give it over to Tyla and, and say what, what she likes about the program. I mean, I think kind of all the same things. Um, yeah, it's funny because I can hear Jackson in the other room. Um, but, you know, I, my best friends are all DCC students, um, and I love that all of our roommates are DCC students. Um, and then being in DCC, I really got, what I was really looking for um, in an honors program was a chance to kind of flex my creative muscle and get outside of um, engineering for a little bit, which to be completely honest, uh, if you want to put engineering in DCC, you can totally make DCC about engineering. It's really up to you. Um, that's the great thing about DCC is that you can really focus on what you want to focus on. So I'm really creative. I really wanted to focus on that aspect. And so, you know, my capstone project was about like, um, racism and activism and so that was kind of what I wanted to do but I have friends who you know are comp sci majors and they wanted to make apps for their um, capstone project or someone built like a smart mirror you can really do whatever you want and that's why I love DCC so much is it's it's what you really want it to want it to be thank you guys so I have another question that kind of um 
ties into some stuff that everyone's kind of been saying. Um, <clears throat> so the question is that um, one of our attendees um, doesn't fully understand the um, premise of like the honors college versus like your other classes. So um, they're asking, is it safe to say like, it's just an inter interesting alternative to your genetic credits? Um, could any of you guys kind of chime into what, um, how you feel that it differs from your classes, one, and then two, kind of like, what is the Honors College experience um, to you? Um, I can speak to that. Uh, I think that that's one way to look at it is a more interesting alternative to your gen ed credits. But uh, I think for a lot of students in the Honors College, it's um, a way to either explore their interests outside of their major or go into a deeper dive into their interests. So um, some students, intentionally choose an LLP that's very different from their major in order to get a more well-rounded experience. And um, it's also a way to be around people that are academically, that you know are academically rigorous and share similar interests. Um, it's a great way to meet people and create a community. And it does have um, professional benefits. Being in the honor college definitely looks good on your resume and proves that you're uh, a student that is um, academically rigorous. And um, it's more than just a fun way to, to, to fulfill your gen eds. Um, I think it's a, a, a really beneficial experience. Thanks, Andrew. Um can I, can I chime in? Because I think sure. I was the one who led to this question. And I apologize for the confusion. When I was comparing it to gen eds before, I was speaking very strictly about the credits you need. Because I know there is some, um, a lot of questions in the chat or the Q&A about, is it an additional workload? Is it that much more? And what I wanted to get across was, no, it's something that you would need credits for in the long run. And that this is what fills it, but it's not just a filler. It is much more. It is an enriching experience and it has definitely helped my overall college experience and, and everything I just said was true. So just want to clear that up. Thanks, Jackson. Um, so next question. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, we've actually got this before. So um, how would you as a student distinguish, um, well, number one, departmental honors is, is different from the honors college, just number one, um, two different things. Um, but distinguishing the two differences, um, the honors college versus departmental honors, and then as far as them being different, let me see, does being an ILS or GEMS help with, say, a biology honors program? So I know Jackson, your biology correct still, biology and then Radhika, could y'all speak on that? One minute. Yeah, so as you said, Chantel, um, departmental honors is distinct from an honors program. Um, that being said, there is an attempt more recently to try to kind of integrate them a little bit more. Um, but departmental honors, the main thing you're looking for there is you will be writing a thesis in your final semester based off of independent research that you do. Um, these departmental honors program are not just available in like biology or chemistry, they're available in a variety of different um, departments across campus. And they're not necessarily um, innately connected to your living and learning program. That being said, what you learn in your living and learning program, what you do in your living and learning program might help you in the long run with your departmental honors. And that's how you might meet your research mentor or learn a core concept, et cetera, but it's not necessarily directly connected. Perfect, thank you. And this one is to Ridika. Okay, Ridika, would you like, what do you like about ILS? Yeah, so like a couple of the other panelists were saying, when it comes to choosing your honors program, I think like the student really has to decide, do you want something that's gonna closely align with your major and what you're studying academically? Or do you want something that's more gonna like diversify the honors college experience. For me personally, I really liked how ILS was very biologically like science focused. Um, it was really great to just come in and everyone that I'm meeting in this program is also maybe pre-med or also planning on doing like a PhD in neuroscience or something. And so it was really cool to meet all these people who had really similar professional interests to me um, because I think it just kind of helps to know that you're already kind of 
you know, you're really similar to start off with. So I really like that. Um, and so I think that community that ILS kind of gave me coming in and then the chance to just grow that community was really big and important to me. That being said, I feel like all of the LLPs have their distinct communities, you know, so just because you go with biology, you go with ILS, that doesn't mean you're going to miss out on something. Rather, it's just going to add to your experience if you're in a different LLP. So I think, again, it really comes down to what the student wants. Um, I liked how when I was coming in, my AP bio credits, my AP chem credits, like right away, I was coming into a bio sequence that would start off with sophomore sophomore year level classes. And I was taking honors versions of those classes with faculty that are also my advisors. So I kind of like that pairing of it. And more than just the academics to it, ILS also has a research component. It also has a service component. And like that also kind of aligned with what I wanted to get out of my college experience. So I think just kind of looking at all those pieces coming together, that's what helped me you decide ILS. Um, but again, I want to stress just because you're pre-med doesn't mean you have to do ILS. Like you will, I have found so many pre-med friends across all the different LLPs. So I want to stress that it's not like a, you have to do ILS just because you're pre-med or something. Thanks, uh, really good. And just like uh, piggybacking off of that, if um, we have other living learning programs in here, represented in here. So if we could kind of go to each one and kind of say what you guys like, and I think somebody already asked that, what you like about your living learning program, um, what you've gotten out of it, um, and the things that you feel the best part of it. Um, let's go to Jim's, Eric. So wait, I'm sorry, just like a summary of why we chose. So like, yeah, so like, what do you like about Jim's? Yeah, sure. So I would, also, I would say coming into college, um, I chose GEMS because I was interested in research from the beginning, like as a career path. And I knew that GEMSTONE would help me decide if I liked research. Um, but similar to what Radhika was saying, I found like so much more in GEMSTONE than just the professional development. Just like having the community that was smaller, um, having that at UMD was like really influential and just like the mentorship. I gained like so many things out of Gemstone that I wasn't expecting. So I think it's just having that community that like, although yes, I did gain a lot professionally from Gemstone, I figured out like what kind of research I'm interested in, like what kind of pre-health field I may be interested in. It's more, it's like less about which program you're in and more about like how much you put into it because there's so many, each LLP has its own like great mentorship program you really can't go wrong and like deciding where to go. Thanks, Eric. Um, for DCC, we want to chime on that. Um, I think um, something that Eric mentioned was like mentorship. I think that's something that's really cool. Um, and, you know, like you said, um, every program has its own community, has its own like mentorship thing going on. So in DCC, we have our two directors, Dr. Farman and Dr. Liu, and they're amazing. And so, um, you know, I think one of my favorite parts about DCC is that coming in my first semester freshman year, I was already forming really close personal relationships with faculty members, um, which was great, especially when it came to applying for internships. And even now when I'm applying to grad school and I've been, you know, out of DCC for two years, but they're still writing me recommendation letters for grad school because we were able to form that that bond um, in those two years. And that's something that's so valuable. Um, and of course that exists in all of the LLPs, but that was my, one of my favorite things about DCC, aside from the community and the classes and all that other stuff. <laughs> so Jackson, you wanna add anything? Um, you gloated about DCC a lot, but I think, <laughs> there, um, yeah, it's unfair. There's two of us. I think I also the diversity um, in the atmosphere was a really um, big part of it. If we didn't already mention that, I think it comes from our directors. Um, they're very inclusive and very open and foster a really like beautiful, comfortable environment for each individual to thrive. And it, it goes out to all the students who are admitted in the program as well. So I think that's a really special part. But I think that can be found everywhere you go, so. Thank you. And then um, Ho-Hum, we're on humanities, Ida. Um, I, sorry, 
One second, I'm trying to read the question again. So oh, it, it's, it went away. So um, the question is, uh, like, what do you like about um, Honors Humanities? Like, why oh. was that the fit for you? Yeah, so I was, uh, when I was ranking, uh, trying to choose between Honors Humanities and DCC, because I'm an architecture major and DCC seems to align better. I saw a lot of people in the chat talking about, oh, which LLP would align best with my major. And like the reason I chose Ho-Hum is because I'm very interested in art um, and uh, I was interested in getting a liberal arts sort of education. Um, and that wasn't gonna really happen with my um, major, which is pretty rigorously uh, already planned out in terms of coursework. <laughs> not much wiggle room there. So I chose Ho-Hum because I wanted to expand um, my education and uh, kind of move away from what was kind of matching with my major. And I've definitely experienced that. I've met a lot of interesting people. We've gone to museums. We've had, you know, philosophical discussions. You know, like we read Aristotle and talk about it, which is not something I ever thought I would be able to do. Um, just like in terms of understanding that type of thing. Um, and it's been a really great rewarding experience. And I think that it's really taught me a different way to like look at the world and the humanities and art and literature. Thanks, Anna, thank you all. Um, so um, next question is, do we, do we have many athletes within honors? Um, and does, does being an athlete impact your ability to participate in any of the learning programs? Um, we do have athletes within the honors program. Um, from what I know, it does not impact anything as far as your participation within your living learning programs. Um, they're, like you said, we're, they're classes, but then they're also the, the, the living aspect. I will say this, actually, let me, let me point this out. If you are, um, I know some, some athletes have to live with their um, team, like in a specific resident hall, um, if that is the case, then you would have to rethink yourself if you're looking at either integrated life sciences or our ACES program, since they do have their own requirements. Um, other than that, um, there should not, not be anything else holding me back from participating in any of the living learning programs. Okay, so is there an option? I, I've actually seen this a couple of times about transferring between living learning programs. Um, there is an option to transfer. There's a whole policy and a, 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 a procedure in place to transfer. Um, however, a couple of things to note about that is that um, you have to apply to transfer. So it's not a guarantee um, that you would get into the, the, the program that you're trying to get into. Also, any uh, courses that you've taken in your current program um, will be pretty much null and void as far as transferring it to the new living learning program because they have their own curriculum. Um, and then also you'd be starting that new curriculum with the incoming freshman class. So for example, if I was in um, ILS and then I took a whole year about like ILS classes and the next year I decided I wanna go into honors humanities, um, my credits would still count for my degree, you know, however it was applied. However, I would have to then take um, the honors humanities courses starting with that, the, the freshman class that just came in and was accepted with them um, to start that curriculum before I can get the honor citation. Did any students want to add to that, that explanation of that? Okay. Is there a community, oh, this is, I like listening to this guys. Is there a community that has many musicians? I'm in the, into the arts, so go ahead. Somebody speak on that. Um, so I don't know what it is, but for some reason, like the majority of people in DCC play instruments. Um, or maybe not the majority, but a very large number of students in DCC play instruments. Um, and don't let that scare you. You do not need to play an instrument to join DCC. Um, but we had a lot of musicians. And so uh, what we would do a lot of the time is we'd all get into one person's room or in the lounge and anyone who had an instrument would bring their instrument. Anyone who didn't would bring their voice and we'd just have jam sessions and we'd sit in there, play music, sing along with songs and things like that. It was a really fun time um, and yeah. There's also a lot of musicians in um, Ho-Hum and we actually have a piano in the basement of Anne Arundel. So every now and then like someone will sit down and play the piano and uh, it'll be just a fun time. Thanks guys. 
Um, that's just another beauty about just being a part of the Honors College. Like you have so many different uh, students um, coming from different backgrounds and perspectives, and they're all coming into this one, the small community and being able to thrive and share that with others. It's amazing. Um, question, so um, what if you wanna, so what if the person wants to room with, I'm just gonna answer that in a different way. Cause I, okay, so you can room with someone else. Like if you wanna have a roommate that is outside of your community, it is a possibility, but it's not guaranteed. You and that um, the person that you're trying to room with would have to um, submit a request um, through a resident life. Um, and then they would try to accommodate it. It's a possibility, but it's not guaranteed, so yes. Let's see. Are there designated senior honor student mentors who can help with a new student if they need any? Anyone want to chime in on that? So there's not like designated mentors just because technically anyone can be a mentor. And so for that reason, um, all of these LLPs often have mentorship programs where sophomore, junior, seniors can apply to be a peer mentor. And then the incoming freshmen are automatically included in that program. So coming in, you immediately have a mentor. Obviously, some mentor mentees are going to hit it off a lot better than others. And so maybe they'll connect more often and whatnot. But the LLPs will also kind of create opportunities for the mentors and mentees to meet. So pre-COVID, when it was like in person, I know ILS would have like Georgetown Cupcake Nights. We'd have game nights. Um, I don't know if any of the other LLPs want to talk about what they did. I can speak on Gemstone's experience. It has something very similar where, again, it's... Uh, maybe like a less formal mentorship program where upperclassmen sign up and every freshman is assigned a mentor. But we also have an alumni program, which I think personally has been um, like really influential because a lot of recent, I'd say a lot of recent graduates like sign up to help uh, freshmen. And that's more useful, I'd say for uh, like internship and research experience, so. Yeah, we Thank have you. a big little program. Sorry, <laughs> I just say just to add on. Yeah, we have a big little program in DCC. Um, so sophomores are paired with the freshmen, um, and they do fun activities. Like I know we did a scavenger hunt, um, and then also before the first day of classes, um, the sophomores will will walk their littles around campus and show them where their classes are, so they won't be lost on the first day. Thank you guys. Um, so the next question kind of ties into some stuff we've already been saying, but I see someone's asking about a living learning program that's best suited for students who like gaming. Um, I would say, from my perspective, and you guys can chime in, but I feel like a lot of students probably get, like do gaming just anyways, especially the new generation. But um, so I think that that's kind of across the board in all of our living learning programs. But again, that's my perspective. If any students want to add to that, Go ahead. <laughs> I, I agree that gaming is ubiquitous across the campus in general. Um, but if anyone is interested in like programming gaming or creating VR games, the um, our living or the Design, Cultures, and Creativity Living and Learning Program has a lab in the basement of Prince Frederick that all DCC students have access to throughout their entire four years, and um, that lab contains 3D printers, VR sets, which you can use whenever you like, or, or not necessarily whenever, but you can use whichever way you like. There's soldering equipment, there's games, there's all these different things. So I think it is a logical fit, but again, gaming can go anywhere you want. So I just wanna address um, a couple questions for, we had someone who asked about ACES and someone who asked about University Honors. Um, feel free to access those questions and we'll answer it um, best we can. The, uh, we do not have a student right now that is here from ACES um, or University Honors, but again, um, we're pretty versed in the different programs. So if you have any specific questions, go ahead and ask them. We'll answer it to the best of our abilities. If not, we'll push you to the right direction. Can I, um, I accidentally deleted your question that oh. I meant to respond to, okay. uh, but I just, a couple of questions came in about roommates um, and just to answer that, um, finding a roommate, uh, there's something called room sync, I think that's what it's called, 
um, that you can use your freshman year or before your freshman year. It's kind of like Facebook, but for roommates, um, you can find a roommate on there. You can also choose to have a random roommate. That's what I did my freshman year. She's still my roommate four years later. Um, or you can um, look on like on Facebook a lot of times like the different honors programs will make their own Facebook groups you can look there you can look on like social media things like that so there are a lot of different avenues for you to find a roommate and to clarify if you do go random uh, you'll be assigned with, to someone in your LLP um, it's not going to be like a person from a different LLP or a non-honor student uh, if you decide to go random and again I think we already talked about this but if you do find a roommate uh, like through Facebook or whatever, uh, it's best to try to find one within your LLP because you're much more likely to get a roommate that you request if they're in your LLP than if you have to like bring them in externally. Uh, so, yeah. Can I jump in here and I'm going to put Jackson on the spot a little bit because he offered to answer questions about ACES. And if you don't know the answer, that's fine. Anyone else can also answer. <laughs> but you said it, so um, there was a question about ACEs and when do internships start? There were two questions in the question, so I answered the first one, but the second one was about internships, and I would wondered if you or anyone else had any more information about when students would start internships in ACEs, or I guess in any of the LLPs. Yeah, so I, I saw that question, and maybe I was also a little confused by the premise, but um, I don't think ACEs is necessarily has one standardized internship opportunity. Um, uh, you can, and that's kind of just up to you. I think a lot of people, because of their connections with uh, Lockheed, is it, or Northrop Grumman, one of the Northrop, um, a lot of people do intern there, but it's not necessarily you have to. I know a lot of people in ACES went anywhere. Um, I mean, I think you can start anytime, but I know a lot of honor students do start interning after their freshman year in, the, in that summer in between freshman and sophomore year, if that hopefully helps any ACEs interested people out there. Also, the can I answer the, um, there's, a, there's a question about UH that we got in the chat that I wanted to clarify. Um, and basically it, it said that is university honors the LLP that students choose if there is nothing left to choose? Um, no, it is not. Um, I know plenty of people who preference university honors first or second. They gladly wanted to go there. They wanted to go there for reasons of flexibility, of getting a breadth of knowledge, um, for having maybe a little bit larger environment. Um, they didn't uh, think the other programs, they might've been too restrictive, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't think it is the last ditch choice by any means. And anyone who picks that program should not feel that way. Thank you, Jackson. Um, yeah, and just to add so, a little bit more on that, since we don't have someone to speak on UH. Um, yeah, so UH is, um, has a new curriculum as of this past fall. And so before, and if some students may, may know older stuff from, from alumni or what have you, it used to be um, overly flexible where, you know, you could just literally pick any um, classes and plug it into how many credits you needed. So if you needed 15 credits, you would just take 15 credits worth of honors classes. Um, it's not like that anymore. There's an actual set curriculum. Um, and like I was explaining earlier, it is more focused. However, it's still multidisciplinary. So um, the idea is they actually have like different topics that you can pick um, and it rotates every two years. So different top, they'll have multiple topics that you can pick. Um, and each topic, they, they bring in experts in different disciplines to go over these topics. So you're getting different perspectives. Um, and so I think it's actually really neat. Again, as Jackson said, we have a lot of students who pick them first and second based off the fact that they want something that is um, uh, reaches across multiple um, avenues and not, maybe they may think that one of the other programs are a little too restrictive. Um, so yeah. Um, now I pass it over to the students because this is um, um, COVID related as far as how you feel like that's impacted your uh, honors experience. Um, does anyone want to speak on that? Like going through, I mean, it was challenging for everyone. Um, so going through uh, kind of transitioning um, virtually, um, how do you think that, um, do you think you missed out on anything? Um, I guess we'll speak on that. Do you think you missed out on anything as far as your experience? I think that uh, if I said we didn't miss out on anything, everyone would know I was being dishonest. Of course, we missed out on stuff. Uh, 
you know, we couldn't do any fun things, any, like, Ho-Hum usually has a uh, weekly regular programming where we do, like, karaoke night, game night, uh, we have, usually have a formal, which I've never gotten to attend because of COVID, um, which sucks, but um, academically, it's been great, and we've tried to do virtual um, fun event nights, um, so we've adjusted the best we can, and I would say that academically, we haven't suffered much at all, it's just with um, some of the extracurricular stuff, but Hopefully with incoming freshmen, that will be less of a problem because like, ugh, hopefully we'll be getting these vaccines and UMD said they're hoping to return to in-person learning next semester. So cross your fingers. Thanks, Ida. Does anyone else want to add? Um, that was a great explanation. Anyone else have any other thing they want to add? I just want to reiterate that like, um, that Although we can't be in person, it has been possible to do things virtually. Um, so like I know DCC, um, our associate director, Dr. Liu, holds uh, yoga classes on Zoom twice a week. And so there are things like that, that like we're still, you know, making efforts to, to build the communities within the living and learning programs. Um, and just because we're not in person doesn't mean we can't do anything. So we are trying still and um, virtual spaces are a little weird. You know, we've been in them for a year, but it's still, <laughs> still need to get used to it. But yeah, we're, we're definitely making efforts to connect virtually and still build up those communities. Since it's one of the most valuable parts of being in an LLP. I would also say that the honors program has done one of the best jobs, I think, in making this community online. Coming in freshman year, I think, everyone can agree the most important thing is like having any community at all because so many UMD students come in not knowing anyone or just people from their hometown. So just having, I mean, I TA'd a freshman class last semester and it was freshmen coming in for their first college experience, logging into Zoom. And they would say their 10 person discussion. Those were some of like the first college friends that they made. So I think, although it is online, like, the Honors College is still gonna offer those same like relationship buildings and opportunities. I wanted to address another question loosely <laughs> attached to this one. I saw it a couple of times pop up in the chat, just about like if being an honors kind of puts like separates you from the rest of the UMD community. Um, Jackson is shaking his, his head no. I completely agree. I feel like if anything, the good thing about honors is it's like, you're kind of coming in, like Eric was saying, like freshmen come in, you don't really have that friendships and you're looking to build those. So honors is a great way that like everyone living on your floor, you're taking classes with them, like you're automatically going to make those friends, you know, because not only are you going to the diner with them, but you're also in class with them at 9am or something. So it's really nice to have that community coming in. But and like, you'll find like, all oh, my roommates were all in honors, they were all in ILS, like Tyler and Jackson are roommates, like a lot of people end up keeping those friendships that they made that first and second year in throughout college. But then also, I have a lot of friends who aren't in ILS who aren't in honors, just because I'm still taking other classes and still doing other things. So you're automatically going to make those other friends and make those connections. But if anything, honors was just that first place where I met those people. So I think it's a plus, <laughs> definitely not a minus. Just to tap onto that, I said this in the chat, um, but uh, this is something I hear a lot when talking about honors. And I, I wanna say that like, it doesn't take away anything from being at UMD. Like you have all the experiences a non-honor student would have in terms of meeting people and everything. It just gives you extra stuff. It does not inhibit you in any way, I would say. Thank you guys. Um, I wanted to, um address this live, um, I was gonna chat it, but um, since there's some uni university honors uh, uh, attendees are that are looking at university honors. So um, it was announced from Dr. Blotty, who is the director of uh, UH, um, that he they will be coming out with new topics um, for this incoming class. So um, be on the lookout for that. I don't know when he said they were gonna um, announce it, um, but, if you have time, uh, go on our website and um, either our visit us page or there's a, um, an option to choose like a living learning program where our videos are. If you look at the university honors video, it actually, he actually tells you, tells, um, tells you when they're announcing it. I just can't remember it right now. 
Um, and then I feel like we've already talked about this before, but if just to recap, um, each, um, how does mentorship differ between the living learning program? So like each living learning program kind of offers something different, um, but they're all kind of in, in regards to mentoring. Um, does anyone want to just like re quickly recap about that in regards to like, uh, like pairing? Um, I, I guess real quick, I mean, mentorship in DCC is mostly from faculty, so people who are teaching your classes as well, the program directors, assistant and, and director. Um, I think that's probably different in places like GEMS where it's maybe a little more robust because it's four year program with a research component, but that's how it operates in DCC and maybe some of the other two year programs. Um, oh, yeah, for, and, oh God, sorry. For, for Honors Humanities, we had the same thing that Tyler said with like the student um, mentor. This year they tried out this thing called families where you're like um, put in small groups uh, where you can like meet people that I think that was an addition for like the virtual uh, learning. And um, since it's humanities are very like kind of soft and like, oh, well, let's talk about it. Uh, not as uh, stem -y. Uh, we did get a lot of support from professors and stuff. We could come into them at any time. Uh, we had like check-ins throughout the semester. They would be like, oh, like, how's your stress level? Is there any way we can support you better? Uh, there was a lot of support uh, freshman year from fellow students who were older than us in the program and from the, the faculty. I can quickly speak on Gemstone's mentorship. Uh, like Jackson was saying, because it is a four-year program, you are connected to your mentor all four years. So I've been with my mentor since freshman year. Um, and it's some, I think for me, it's really valuable to have someone see you grow like all four years. They really get to know you on like a much deeper level. And like separately to that, we have the alumni program, which I spoke about earlier, but just briefly, it's like recent alumni graduates of the Gemstone program who like can connect with current students and give them internship and just like different career advice. So I'd say that's also very helpful. Thank you guys. Um, did, did you wanna answer this question a lot? Okay. Yeah, I just wanna clarify. There's a question about um, since Honors has dedicated housing, do you, does, does the student still need to submit a separate application for on-campus housing? The answer is yes. Um, the reason is that um, Res Life actually makes the housing assignments. And if they do not have an application form you, they cannot assign you to housing. So they will know which students are honors and which living learning programs the students are in. But uh, Res Life actually makes the assignment. So if a student wants to be in, for instance, ACES, which requires students to live in that housing and they do not submit a housing assignment, they will be moved out of ACES. We'll find another spot for them in honors, but they will not be in ACEs. So students must, must, must submit the um, housing application for on-campus housing by May 1st. Thank you. Um, next question, um, do you have to be artistic? I feel like we get this a lot too. <laughs> do you have to be artistic or really creative to be in DCC? Yeah, um, this is a question that a lot of people ask, uh, I guess, because creativity is in our name. And I think one of the biggest things about BCC is that creativity does not just mean artistic ability. And we stress that so much that creativity comes in like many different forms. Um, so no, you don't have to be artistic to be in DCC. You don't have to be traditionally creative to be in DCC. And that's what DCC is all about is helping you figure out what creativity means to you and how you can use your skills in a creative way. Um, so yeah. And if I add on, um, that question was the very question I was asking myself when I was applying or preferencing. Um, and it was the reason, like my parents were like, you should apply, you should apply. And I was like, I don't think I'm creative enough. I don't think I can do it. I think everyone there is gonna be so crazy impressive. There is none of that creative elitism um, as Tyler was referencing, like creativity takes any, any and all forms, what it means to you. And that's kind of what you learn to cultivate in DCC. So no, you do not have to be, standardly artsy or creative to be in DCC. Thank you guys. And even just to um, um, piggyback off of what you guys said, um, 
um, Dr. Jason Farmer, who's a director of um, DCC, actually explicitly said, um, and you can go to the video on our website just to hear what he said, but DCC is a place where he likes to say it's people from all walks of life that don't have one specific interest. It's one thing he likes to stress a lot. He's like, if you have a set goal for like, like a like restrictive narrow path somewhere, you just want to go here, that's fine. DCC may not be for you. He um, really stresses the fact that it's people coming from, like they have 10, 10 million uh, uh, interests and they're using all of that. I guess that that's the creative side. You have so many different interests um, and you don't kind of put yourself in a box. Um, yeah. Um, someone mentioned one could be an eyeless in Quest. What exactly is Quest and how does it integrate with Alice? Um, oh, I'm, go ahead, Ridika. Yeah, I'm about to submit the question, but um, the answer basically, I'm, I'm going to link the website for Quest. Quest is like a separate program, um, it's not part of the Honors College, but it's obviously also amazing. Um, I'll link the website and so whoever's interested can look into that. Students would apply for Quest during their freshman year and then if they get in they would then take Quest classes throughout sophomore through senior year. It's a three-year program and then these classes would be in addition to their degree classes, their honors classes, minors classes, whatever that may be. Um, so kind of like any other academic program that you're joining as you join more things you just have more requirements to fill. Thanks, Radhika. Um, so we have about 15 minutes left. Um, keep sending the questions in. Looks like we kind of answered all of them so far. So while we're waiting, um, if a couple of you guys um, could probably give advice and that the, again, our audience is um, families of incoming students um, that are probably trying to pick um, a program, one of the living room programs in preference, and then try to also understand how the honors college plays in um, their overall um, unity experience. So like maybe even talk about some like a, a memory that you have so far, like a memorable moment or something that you feel like you would not have gotten had you not been a part of the honors college. So anyone can jump in. I've been talking a lot, but I'll go first. <laughs> but um, I think what I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't join the Honors College, um, I probably would have stayed pre-med. I know that sounds like odd. And it wasn't, I didn't stop because it was necessarily too hard, which it is very rigorous. I stopped because I realized in DCC, I did have those billion different interests and there are other different career paths that encapsulated that. And so if I didn't have this Honors College experience, I wouldn't have tried different things um, and explored different options. And also, um, as we all have said, I would not have had the community that I've had here and developed uh, personally the way I did, which I think has been like, transformative in a lot of ways. And then finally, professionally, I wouldn't have had, um, as Tyler referenced earlier, the ability to have built-in recommenders um, for all different internship, scholarship, graduate school, um, applications that I'm currently applying for or throughout my college career, I wouldn't have had people to help give me some type of guidance when I was confused about processes or um, like my varying interests. So I think all of those things are why like the Honors College and I guess University of Maryland, because I know that's a question coming up, were um, kind of the right fit for me and in the long run. I'm glad you just added to that. Yeah, so I was going to say if anyone wants to answer that or to the UMD and whole, someone asked about why you chose UMD. I think that the Honors College was a big reason I chose UMD. I was um, pretty scared about going to such a big university. Uh, and uh, with my Honors classes, it was a way to like get a chance to actually speak in class and share my opinion and hear the opinions of the people I was in class with really get, helps you get to know people. Um, and what was, the, uh, what was something I wish I knew before preferencing? Um, uh, I wish I knew more about like what each of the um, program, which what each of the LLPs uh, is like in terms of vibe and coursework. And uh, to get that information, I would recommend uh, going onto each of their websites and looking at the coursework and like the photos. 
and maybe reaching out to people on Facebook or Instagram who like are in the LLP. I mean, don't harass anyone, but sending a DM couldn't hurt. Like, oh, I'm an incoming student. Could you speak to this? Uh, I think that people will be friendly about that. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, yeah. I want to oh, go ahead, Tom. Oh, I was going to say, and um, you also asked in there about like a memory that stands out to us. Um, from being in honors. I have a lot, um, but I think one of my favorite ones is, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but um, my freshman year, it was first semester, we'd been in Prince Frederick for like maybe a month. Um, so we were still getting to know everyone. And one random night, um, we just had like a maybe like two or three hour long jam session in the lounge on our floor. Um, and almost everyone who lived on the floor came out, freshmen and sophomores, and it was just a great like intro to college and a great way to build community. And I think I look back on that memory with such fondness because that was really like, like you could visibly see there like what the community was and kind of what the, the atmosphere was and how supportive and like loving and welcoming everyone was. So it's one of my favorite honors memories. I'd also like to add Gemstone has a very similar, I think every program has a similar like welcome event. Um, so I don't really have like one Gemstone memory just because I think almost all my college memories had Gemstone people there. So I don't know, like in many ways, my Gemstone experience is my college experience, but I'd say like the welcome events are just a really, that's like what I remember most just cause that's when I first met like a lot of my closest friends. And I know Gemstone specifically has, it's called like Gems Camp, which is a whole like three day program where we go out in the woods and like, I don't know, learn about Gemstone. It's like, it sounds really uh, like interesting, but it's like a really fun time. You can like watch the video on the website. It's like really fun, but that's probably my fondest memory. Just like getting to know everyone. I want to give you space. Anyone else want me to add to that? No, I feel like I have, I have like two ways that I think about ILS. Like I just, it's so crazy. Like thinking back to like freshman year when we would like all still live together. Like one of my probably best memories, just like those random fun nights when like somehow kind of like how Tyler said, you guys just had like a spontaneous jam session. Like somehow it was like 11 o'clock and we were all just like debating something. And there were like half the people who lived there were all just somehow in the lounge and we were all just, I don't even know what we were talking about, but it's just like such a quintessential college memory that we're just all there and just having fun. Um, and then there's those other memories of when, you know, you have orgo homework, you like give or orgo exam or something, and then everyone's studying for it because everyone's taking the class at the same time. And so you're like running between different rooms and you're running to the lounge. There's probably some compound scrawled on the whiteboard and someone's like, what is that? And they're like, oh, I think it's the answer to number three, but I don't know. And like, it's just so chaotic, but crazy and fun. And I don't know, it's, it's ILS and I love it. <laughs> That's so awesome. What are funny? Um, Make me miss my my undergrad memories. Oh, I'm so far gone. Um, and this is bittersweet because a lot of our, uh, for you guys out there, a lot of our um, uh, students here are se seniors. So I know. <laughs> it's very bittersweet them kind of going over their memories. <laughs> Um, so anyone else want to add about like what you knew? I know Ida spoke on what you knew about like wish you, what you wish you knew about preferencing prior to. I mean, the main thing really is to like do as much research as you can. Um, I think this year, especially we tried to like plug so many options for our students to kind of learn more about it. We have the virtual hangouts that you can talk to students. Um, 101, we had, we've had multiple online chats. We have our students here to ask those type of questions. Then we had the program specific, you know, um, learning events. They're all on our website for you to kind of learn more about. Um, and then you can visit those individual websites to learn even more about those programs. But other than that, anything else from a student perspective that you think you guys would want to have known? I know Gemstone is a little more, one of the stricter LLPs in terms of when you can study abroad and the fact that it is like a four-year program so just make sure you know you're like what you're getting yourself into before you preference that and like the living requirements just for the first year too but other than that i think 
like everyone was saying, just what you're interested in should be the main decider. Definitely. Um, thank you. I, I want to reiterate Ida's tip of reaching out or going to like one of the virtual hangouts. I think, yes, don't harass us, <laughs> please. <laughs> But also, like, we are very nice people who love the respective programs we're in, and that's why we're here talking to you about it. So we'd love to talk to you about it anytime. Um, I think that is the, basically the only way you can get an accurate reflection of what it's like to be in the program is to actually talk to someone who's been in the program, whether it's in a formal in or informal setting. Absolutely. Um, and even to add on that, I just thought about this. Um, if uh, your students go to our Instagram page um, at Terp Honors, um, we have a highlight area where um, each program has um, like a student who kind of goes through the experience from that um, from that uh, living learning programs perspective, and they've included their contact information on in there to be contacted if you have any questions. So that's another quick plug if you want to kind of talk to a student. Um, let's see. I just want to, yeah, I just want to throw out the virtual hangouts again. If you go to the link that Jenny posted in the chat and just there's like links to all of the different office hours and ways to reach out. But if you scroll down a little, you'll see the virtual honors hangouts. Those are basically, they used to be in person where, you know, you get to follow a current student, go to their classes and whatnot with virtual and COVID reasons. We've turned, turned them virtual. Um, and so it's a really great way to just like, if you have a living and learning program in mind. And if you know what you're majoring in, we can pair you up with a student that hopefully lines up pretty similarly, if not exactly like that. Um, and then you can ask specific questions to that student about their experience, you know, why they chose that LLP, how they feel it fits in with their major. That will especially help if you're like trying to figure out if you want an LLP that really complements your major or maybe is a little different and provides you like a different, more diverse course selection. So there's a lot more students in honors than just us panelists and every student you talk to is gonna tell you something more about honors. Absolutely. So use the resources under there. Um, any specific, so do we have, first of all, are any of our, um, I feel like the majority of you are in-state students, right? Is anybody coming from out of state? No? Okay. So um, there is a question about any specific advice for out of state students and what to expect. Um, I would say this, because I'm sure you want a student's perspective. Um, if again, hate to keep saying this, but if you go to our Terp, um, our um, Instagram page, um, I know for a fact DCC actually has a highlight of one of our students, Jason, who is out of state. And he goes into depth about his experience as an out of state student within his video. So like, I recommend you and does and yes, it's for DCC. You don't need to be interested in DCC, but he talks from an out of state student perspective. So I recommend you go check out his videos. And he was very thorough with his answers. So go check it out. <laughs> Jason is our other roommate. So yeah. plug that to infinity. He is great. And he will offer you very valuable insight because he's a meticulous human being. Thank you guys. Um, and then okay, so I guess we can end this. I mean, this is not a positive note, but um, is there any? <laughs> the last question came in was kind of a negative one, but it's okay. Um, is there any? Um, this one says, would there be one or two reasons why you would not want to be part of the honors college? I mean, it may not be for everybody. So, what would you say? Are there any negatives about your, you know, being in this uh, community? I will say um, if you don't, like if you don't want to like uh, kind of extend your education beyond just like taking your classes and doing your major and getting done, then don't join honors because that's the whole point of honors is it's, it's a supplement to your education. And so if you just want to come in, take your major requirements and leave, then honors is not the place for you but if you want to really like um build upon your your education and, and take advantage of your time here then do join honors anyone else want to add on that i think it's i don't know if there's negatives because i don't want to not ever describe anything as negatives i really just think it's a personal preference thing so if you're really much like tyler said you just kind of want to 
go here, do your degree oriented material and some maybe extracurriculars, but not really necessarily have like another extended part of it, but maybe honors isn't the best for you. Also, maybe some people really just like living in a big college atmosphere and not having it shrunk down and having this community. And that also makes sense. And I completely understand that. I just think from my perspective, there hasn't been any negatives. I really think it has um, made my experience at the University of Maryland that much better. Um, but I can also see why some people just might not want that type of environment right now. And like speaking from, again, I've been some years since I've been an undergrad, but speaking even from like a, a, an older person's perspective on seeing what the Honors College brings for our students, I wish I was a part of a community like this when I went to um, my university, um, but we didn't have this type of, type of offering. So even just looking in, I think it's, you know, a great place to just kind of start, especially with this campus being so huge. Um, again, great things come for being on a, you know, a big campus like UMD. There's so many different opportunities, um, different people and, and, and um, experiences. But again, just having kind of like a close-knit community, especially for our, our freshmen um, coming in and being able to connect more authentically, which is something that we strive for, and then having those close relationships with people, um, learning from them, getting close relationships off the back with faculty and staff is just great. So, um, so that is pretty much, oh, thank you guys. Um, that's pretty much the uh, end. I don't see any more questions. So that's awesome that we answered all you guys' questions. Um, however, if you have any more, um, feel free to email us again, honorsadmissions at umd.edu. Go to our webpage, 